Today, Dixie Belle gave me my hardest painting challenge yet in the form of a mystery box. Now, what's a mystery box, you ask? Well, it means that I didn't get to choose any of the products that I'm using today. Dixie Belle chose them all for me and it's going to be just as much of a surprise to me as it is to you guys as to what I'm going to be painting with today. Also, I'm doing this with my fellow friends and brand ambassadors, Connie from Faf Designs and Shayna from The Flipped Piece. So make sure after you've watched this vid, you go check out their channels too. So I wasted no time getting to it. And here are the products that I found in my box. A part of me was very, <laughs> how do I say this? A part of me was very surprised at what Dixie Belle had chosen. Dixie Belle have not made it easy for me. I have four different types of brushes. I have paint colors that you would not normally put together and especially paint colors that you wouldn't put together with this decoupage paper. It almost made me think they were having a good laugh around the office table when they decided to send us these products. You're having a laugh. Wait, nah. Maybe it was all just a joke. So I got my pinny on. I got armed with my brushes. And various other things ready for painting. I decided to start with Dixie Belle's Moonbeam clay paint because this is a nice white and I thought this would be the perfect background for the decoupage paper ensuring that all of the colours on my decoupage paper are going to be nice and bright. I used my mini brush to paint this on and I just did it very rough and ready. It didn't really matter how smoothly this went on just as long as I had some nice white coverage. So I've painted all of this in white now. I've actually left all the chippiness of the wood because I thought, well, that might add like a nice rustic touch, but I have no plan for this at all. I'm going to put the decoupage paper on and then I have no clue what I'm doing after that <laughs> at this point. I then opened my decoupage paper and gave it a good look over and had to think about which image on the decoupage paper that I wanted to use. In the end, I did use the gondola. Gondola? Gondola? Gondola. Am I saying that right? <laughs> in the end, I decided to use the boat and I also chopped this in half to make sure that it would fit on my chair. I also cut around any edges that were hanging off of the chair. Don't worry at the moment about it looking perfect, about having perfect lines, because all of this is going to be blended in. After I did this, I then applied my satin clear coat as a glue, so I just put one coat of this on to start with. I then applied my decoupage paper over the top. And then use more of the satin clear coat to make sure that was glued on nice and tight. It was a lot of effort putting on that decoupage paper, so now it's time to take a minute and have a brew. Also, ignore my messy workshop in the background there. I wish I could say it's a one-off, but I would, I, I would be lying, so yeah. Okay, so now it's time for the fun stuff, and that is to start getting this blended in. I knew I couldn't use my colors as is, because a lot of the colors were far too bold and pigmented for the soft tones that were in the decoupage paper, and also, they just weren't the right colours for the decoupage paper in general. I have the challenge of making these colours work, so 
I knew I was going to have to do some mixing. I thought it would be easier to pour all of my colours out on a tray so that I could just blend them as and when I needed them. The first colour that I decided to blend was a soft brown. I did this by mixing marigold with onyx, which is orange and black. I also mixed in a tiny little bit of wheat, which is the soft yellow, and then mixed in a little bit of white whenever I felt like I needed to lighten it up a little bit. I started just by placing this as a border all around the edges of the decoupage paper. Whenever I felt like the edges weren't blending in so nice into the decoupage paper, because I was bringing that paint right down into the decoupage paper, I then brought in my Big Daddy brush, which is the Big Daddy of all brushes. It is loaded with bristles and it is fantastic for blending. So all I did was dab this around my edges and then that just softened them out a little bit and I had no harsh lines there. However, I was, when I was looking at the decoupage paper, I realized there was a lot of brush strokes in the original artwork, so I knew I had to create some of that myself. So I grabbed my artist brush and I went back and forth between a big one and a small one. I don't actually know what they're called either. The big one, so we'll just call them the big one and the small one for the sake of this video. I'm not being overly technical in the way that I am applying these brush strokes because obviously I don't want to hide them, I don't want to overly blend them, I want them to be apparent so that it matches the original artwork. So I also did some extra mixing. I mixed my Bougainville, I hope I said that right, I'm so bad with words today, with a little bit of the Moonbeam and the Wheat to get this really soft pink. I also mix my onyx with the moonbeam to get a grey and I just started layering and applying those. I work from the bottom where there's a lot of shadows so that was quite easy to add the brush strokes to because it was quite dark so I just added in some more shadows. The difficulty came when I had to apply the top part because I didn't have the correct colours to actually blend this in so I did have to get a little bit creative. So what's making this really difficult is the fact I don't have a blue to blend in with the top part. So I'm somehow trying to work around that while still somehow trying to make my paint look like it's part of the overall picture, you know, like it's part of the decoupage paper. Because in fact, I don't want it to look like decoupage paper at all. I want it to look like it's all been seamlessly painted on. <laughs> I played around for quite a while in order to try and make this work and it was clear to me that it wasn't the working the way that I wanted it to. But playing around is always good and it did mean that I had some base layers that I could work with and layer over the top. So it wasn't a total disaster. However, I did start getting a sweat on at one point thinking, how am I gonna make this work? I need to make this work. <laughs> I'm not one to really give up, so what I realized was that I needed to hide a lot of the blue that was in the top part of the rice paper so that I could then use my colors over the top. So all I did was I grabbed my pink, so I just started to paint a little bit over the top of the blue in order to hide it, make the paint colors look that little bit more seamless. The really forgiving thing about this again is is that there are lots of brush strokes in this, so I didn't need to be absolutely perfect. 
It still wasn't looking right to me though and I knew that I had to do something to really push this to the next level. What I decided was the bottom part of the decoupage paper was going to be the canal, but actually I'm going to create my own sky. So I drew a very soft line with my charcoal color that I created so that I could create the illusion of there being a bit of a landscape. I also continued to use my charcoal color and I just painted an outline of what might be a little island or a little town with maybe a few little buildings or crags and I just kept these very dark because I wanted them to look very shadowed and very hidden by the light. And then I actually did it. I actually seemed to somehow blend in these colors with the decoupage paper and also make it look like there was a lake or a river with an horizon behind it. So as soon as I was happy with the way that looked, I had to paint the rest of the chair. I decided to make this as simple as I possibly could. I grabbed my bell brush. It's quite soft for natural bristles, but they're tightly locked in, and I knew that was gonna be perfect for stippling to create a kind of stone-like texture. I used the colors that I'd already mixed, and I just began to stipple them out and blend them together. I wasn't using any extra colors at all for the rest of my chair. I was just using what I'd already made simple. It was now time to seal the clay paint. Clay paint is not self-sealing. It always needs some kind of top coat because I was given the satin clear coat. That's what I decided to seal with. So using my mini brush again, I put two coats of the satin clear coat to make sure the clay paint and the decoupage paper were all nice and sealed. And then once that had dried, I grabbed my bell brush again and I used that for the best dang wax in black. And the way that I used the black wax was very, very softly. I actually wiped out any excess onto a rag to make sure that I wasn't applying too much at once. And I just basically applied it around the edges. I, I tried to create a vignette around the actual paper itself, like maybe a bit of a frame or maybe when you take a photo and you know you get that nice dark hazy border around it. But I also then just used a tiny little bit on the rest of the chair, focusing mainly on any crevices or details just to give it a little bit of age and just to give it more drama and depth. And then my final product is actually probably the hardest product. So I had to find a way to use the chameleon wax in cactus, which is an iridescent wax. I love these waxes because the overall look of the chair was kind of rustic and aged and just overall quite soft. I just felt like the iridescent wax perhaps wasn't the best fit for this. However, part of my mystery box challenge is to use it, so I had to find a way to use it somehow. I did cheat a little bit, just, just a little bit. I decided to use a little bit just to embellish the edges in the middle of the chair, and that way I can say that I put the wax on it without having to actually bring too much attention to it. All right, and here's a moment you've been waiting for. Here is the finished look. Now, it may not be my best makeover that I've ever done, ever. However, <laughs> I managed to work with what I was given, which wasn't the easiest, and I managed to create something not that bad. Not being down on myself here, I'm just joking, guys. I actually had a lot of fun creating this. The great thing about the mystery boxes is that I get products chosen for me that I might not necessarily choose, and it really helps 
me step out of my comfort zone and get out of my kind of usual way of painting because I really had to think a different way to how I would normally think in order to complete this project. And actually it turned out all right I re and I really enjoyed painting it. So I would love to know what you guys think to this makeover and give me your honest opinions, hit me with it. But also if you did enjoy this video, then make sure you check out this one here where I do a, another mystery box challenge, which was also quite fun. And as always guys, have an awesome time painting and take care.